Let's have a look at a question where I'm gonna give you two minutes. I'm gonna put the question on now. I'll do the timing for you, so don't worry about pausing the video. We'll go two minutes, give you plenty of time to do it. Have a go now, and then we'll go through the answers after. I hope you found that question okay and manageable. I actually, as I was going through the answers of this, I found that there's actually a mistake on this. So I added my own, you can choose one or more because it says one of them is incorrect, which actually isn't. So let's go through it and I'll talk you through the answers. So the first stage with this is that we have to work out which dice is which, right? So we know that what, which die is which should I say? So we know that one of them, opposite sides will always add up to nine, and the other, the opposite sides will always add up to five, right? So, the first thing that I noticed is that, well, you've got a five and a four here, which to add up to nine, these must be on opposite sides, right? So this can't be the nine die. So this has to be the five die. So, um, so one die is always nine, so that must be this one because the number four needs to be on this invisible bottom side here that you can't see uh, because otherwise that just wouldn't make sense because this has to be the five die where the invisible side here is zero, the invisible side on here is one, and the invisible side of this uh, opposite to this two is three. And I'll show you that illustrated here. Um, so that's just confirming which is which. But then that's how we work out what are the numbers that we can't see. So obviously we can see the four, which has to have an opposing one. We can see the five, which has to have an opposing zero. We can see the two, which has to have an opposing three. And then for them all to add up to nine, we've got the same here. So five must have a corresponding four. Uh, two must have a corresponding seven. Remember that it's an unusual die in that it's not a normal one to six die. And then for the three that we can see here, we have to have a six, right? So. But that's the first stage. We need to know, like I say, from this question, we need to know which die is which, so what we're dealing with, and then we can work it out. So then I've, I've just rearranged the question so that you can see all the kind of question die, and we have to work it out from there. So the first one we can take straight away, and we know that this isn't going to be right. And the reason that we know that this isn't going to be right is because it has a six, so that means it can't be the five die, of course. And then, of course, if you have a six, then the opposing side needs to be a three. And we can see the three, so therefore that can't be the opposing side. And that means that it has to be incorrect. Now, B isn't so much that it's more tricky, but we have to start using our visualization, kind of rotating this in our head to work out what's what. 
So, firstly, we, we have to work out which one it belongs to, right? So, we can kind of almost immediately say that it must belong to the 9 die because if you look here, the 3 to be a part of the, to be the 5 die would have to be uh, have, have a 2 on the opposing side. And a neat little trick that I can do here is to start rotating it so you can visualize yourself what I'm doing in my head. Right, so we can rotate this die to show you that if the 3 is there and the 2 is there, well then this can't be the same die because of course then the 4, this would have to be a 4 and it's not. Therefore, we can straight away write off that this is not the right one, okay? So we can rule that one out. So first we have to work out whether C is the 9 die or the 5 die. And the way that we can work that out is that you can imagine if this was flipped this way around and the 1 was the invisible side, then you couldn't have the 2 on the other side because that wouldn't add it up to 9. And therefore, this has to be the 5 die. Then we need to work out, well, can, can, this, be the, can this be correct? So let's take our five die and let's rotate it to how it looks here. So now that we have our die rotated, we can see we have the five on the side where it needs to be. And really all we need to do is, so we need to imagine that the five here, the opposite side is the zero. But if we're just rotating this five, this die along its axis, we can see that you could feasibly, if you turned it 90 degrees this way and then 90 degrees again, so that this two is on the bottom and this four is on the other side, that that would mean that the corresponding three could be on this bottom side and the corresponding one could be on the opposite side to that. And you're just kind of twisting it um, with the five staying where it is, but twisting it in a way, um, in a kind of anti-clockwise way that's showing you all the numbers that are on that side. So that could work. So that means that C is actually correct. Now the next one um, is a funny one because in the original question that I found on, uh, on, on Google, this said that this wasn't correct. But let me show you why this is correct. So straight away, we know that D is belonging to the nine die family, but does it work with the current die or do we have to do anything to make this? visible that it that it works so let's rotate it back into a format where we can see it now a similar sort of thing if we were to rotate this die 90 degrees this way could this work because for this to work as we rotate it 90 degrees one way then the two could be on the top the five could stay where it is so we can't replicate that but you can imagine if we were turning this 90 degrees that way this three would go over the edge this two would go where the three currently is and then we would expose a number here now if that were to be a six then that would mean that the three and the six have opposing ones which add up to nine the two would then require a seven here we don't we can't see that but we can imagine that the seven is there and then the four could be on this other invisible side, the back side that we can't see. So that is why, although they said on their question that it can't work, this actually can work. This is a this is a possible one that works, okay? And then finally we have E. Now, why does E not work? Let's have a look. Now we can tell right away that E has to belong to the five die because um, you need, if, if anything that has a five would need to have a four opposing it to add up to nine. Therefore, it doesn't have that, so it can't. So that would mean that we need this five die here to have. So let's orientate what we do have. So this is, you know, as I was saying, this is what you're doing in your head. This is what you're working out as we go along to you kind of visualizing, rotating this, right? And you can see by rotating it now, of course, we would need to have a zero on the opposite side to this five, a three on the opposite side here. But we can see that in this orientation, the, the, the two things don't match. So now we've rotated them to be in the exact same lie. And then the five and the four are the same. Therefore, the top should match. And obviously, because they don't, there's a two and a three. 
and that makes it so that that one is not the right answer. So they're actually, like I say, despite what they said in those questions, there's there are actually two answers there, and you can see when we kind of work through them and spatially orientate them, you can see why that's the case. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, while we've got some slides prepared, I might as well take you through these. Uh, so type special question, you'll either have visualization, construction and deconstruction, or navigation. So with these die ones, you can. I mean, people talk about recommending you can tear the paper up and build the die yourselves if you want. Um, if, I don't know how quickly you can do that. I think it, I don't think you've got in the 112 seconds. I don't know if you've got the time to do it. But you can visualize it and you can try and draw them out in a way that um, you can kind of understand the orientation. I think doing this little, it's almost like a compass, isn't it? Um, a kind of die compass might put you in a good position just to quickly understand everything that's going on um but yeah if you can do it in your head then obviously that makes things a lot quicker um then so there's also navigation one so visualization just like i say imagine you have to imagine the shapes rotate them in your head get used to kind of that kind of in mind engineering um then to how you approach these questions so construct and deconstruct the shapes okay apply the visualization as i said the best method uh so imagine the original shape in three dimensions rotate it then go to the option the first option as we did work out whether it works or not and if it doesn't and then just go through the rest and see how that works and, and kind of apply the same rotation and visualization in your head and see if um it fits and if it does then great and if not move on to the next one so just to summarize, there are three question types and we talked about those. Um, some of the questions combine different bits and different skills, definitely construction, deconstruction and visualization with this. And finally, just remember to be smart with your time management for these. It's really important that you don't get caught up on a question. If it's too long, just be ruthless with it and uh, just flag it, move on, have a guess. There's no negative marking and then come back to it if you've got a bit more time at the end. So I hope you can see from that question how rotating things in your head and really picturing how the objects move in space is really going to help you visualize how to kind of go about them and get the right answer. Another common type of question that you get for these spatial type ones is where you have objects stacked and then you can see them from only the direct in front view so you don't get a 3D representation of what it is. You might just get a 2D representation of a 3D thing. And the important thing to realize with that is that objects don't float. So for example, you might have a stairway of blocks and you, they're going to ask you how many blocks are in that stairway and you'll only be able to see the first one for the for the front row for the next row you'll only be able to see the second one poking through above that as if you were climbing a stairway you can only see the step and then the one after that you'll see the third one up because the two and the one are hidden so it's really important to kind of understand as if you're looking at a stairway straight on Things don't float. There's something underneath that that's supporting that. So those are the kind of questions that trip people up on the spatial. So building blocks, asking you how many blocks make up that section. So for those types of questions, remembering simple things like your physics where objects don't float and it's just about visualizing it three dimensionally. So for that type of question, just build the 3D image in your head, work out what's supporting the objects that you can see. Remember that there are some invisible cubes there that you have to kind of imagine and count in your total cube count. And then you just work out the columns and the rows and then add them up.